Excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just remove it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. <coughs> and that voice that you just heard was Mally Moore, co-host. What's up? Um, if you are new to the show, thank you for tuning in. And if you are a returning guest, you already know the deal. Uh, what we like to do is watch movies that don't end uh, in a very uplifting manner. And we try to find a silver lining, hence the name of the show. Uh, mm-hmm. this week we're still in quarantine as we record this. So I thought, <laughs> what better excuse, uh, to revisit this horror film from 2008 quarantine. Um, How happy with yourself were you when you realized, <laughs> oh my God, we can do quarantine in quarantine. I don't know if you realize, but there's besides black swan, there's been a theme of my pick so far. This I, no, no, <laughs> I I've noticed. <laughs> I've noticed. Uh, you know what? It's funny. I didn't even think about quarantine at first. I just was solely focused on contagion. I was like, well, we got to do that one because that's like a no brainer. And then I was like, oh, yeah, there is a little film called Quarantine that I mean, is there there's probably a film called Lockdown. We could probably do <laughs> um, a movie called there Isolation. There is a movie called Lockdown, actually. Does it star uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin? Because it seems like or it should. Lock, locked out? Lockout? I, lockout. I don't fucking know. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway. we're not talking about those movies. This week we're talking about Quarantine. Uh, Mally, do you remember the first time you saw this movie? And what Yeah, was so I remember, I don't think I saw it in theaters, shockingly. Oh. Um, it's possible I did and just forgot about it. Yeah. Because um, that was like during the, like that was the time where like all my friends worked at the movie theater. So we just watched everything. But the f- like, I actually remember seeing this movie. I was at like a fucking uh, movie rental store. The, mm-hmm. This was 2008. Those were still a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, streaming was not a thing. Um, yeah, Netflix was around, right? Doing discs. Doing discs, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I definitely got stuff like... I was def- I definitely had like a Netflix subscription. I would get DVDs in the mail like once a month. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I think that's how I rewatched some of The Office back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I was at this like movie rental place and it was like a horror movie only type place. If memory sir, I just maybe it was around Halloween or so. I don't know. Pretty but cool. There was just like horror movies everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I remember this had apparently had just come out on DVD because mm-hmm. they had a bunch of them on a standee up at the front. And I was like, oh, like this okay like i remember seeing previews for this like it looked cool so me and my girlfriend at the time um she actually bought it Mm -hmm. um which was bold i used to do that all the time we would buy movies like without having seen them just like fuck it because that was back when like having a cool a big dvd collection was like the coolest coolest fuck movies stopped drain my bank account yeah (sighs) dude oh my god i spent so much money on DVDs and Blu-ray. And I remember when Blu-ray became a thing, I was like, well, got to start buying Blu-rays now. And like, I would buy stuff I already owned on DVD, just have it on Mm -hmm. Blu-ray. I sold my whole collection like last year. It was awesome. Um, Because I held on to that shit. The second (laughs) I could go digital, I did. I I have hard drives now. I just backed up all these movies that I bought that. Uh Oh, I remember uh, if you've, listen to the episodes he's been on uh, old Johnny Utah. He went fully digital and he gave me his old Blu-ray collection. Mm-hmm. And then like a year later, I sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do what you got, um, thanks Utah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I bought this movie and I remember watching it and I remember liking it. Um, Not so much on this rewatch. I didn't like it this time. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Like it, it, it has its moments, but overall, I was kind of like, "This is fucking silly." Fair, yeah, that's a fair assumption. Um, I was surprised for me how much it held up. Um, I will I, say this cast absolutely stacked in retrospect. Yeah, like I, I think I did see this in theaters because the trailer intrigued me. 
um, which we'll get into. Might be a, that might be a first where you saw something in theaters and I didn't. Yeah, that actually might be a first. Um, I was, I would, 2008, I would have been a senior in high school unless this came out. Let, let me see. I think this came out probably later than. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I was intrigued by the trailer, saw it, and was like, all right, I'll go see the movie, go to the theater. I watched the movie, and I have something to say about the movie that fully relates to the trailer, so I'll wait to get it uh, to, to describe that part of it. But I did enjoy the movie then, and then I found out it was a remake of, uh, I think it's an Italian horror movie called Record? Uh, Spain. Spanish. I think. Yes, a Spanish, Spanish horror yeah. film. Uh, called record i went and saw have you, that have you seen that yeah i have uh um, pretty much shot for shot remake <laughs> but like doesn't like this one like i know the directors of the original don't care for this no they like because wasn't it like a wreck was like a lot more is it wreck or record well i mean it's stylized like a record button like you would oh, press. Oh god! So I always like, called it wreck. It's like bracket. But R-E-C, I'm probably an idiot. Bracket. So it I probably mean, is record. I just call it record. It doesn't matter anyway. But yeah. wasn't like wasn't it like didn't it have like religious like overtones or some shit like that? I, See I was that about? I don't remember. I've seen it once, and I remember liking it more than quarantine. But I remember it also being almost a shot for shot remake. <laughs> Maybe some of the dialogue changed between the two. I don't really recall all the differences, but that franchise has spawned four movies whereas this one apparently spawned a sequel that i didn't know about until recently yeah i think it was like a direct uh digital Probably. sequel or yeah. something or dvd or i don't know i mean it's it's one of those found footage things like you're e- they're either really good like i would say blair witch project cloverfield um past episode Dude, something about I don't like I usually don't have an issue with found footage movies like I love Cloverfield. Um, I actually like the original Blair Witch, but it bothered the fuck out of me in this movie. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I see. I like I said, this movie held up a lot more than I remember it. Like I expected fully going into this to just hate it, but I found it. it's a fun little horror movie. I mean, it's a simple concept. That they get a lot of mileage out. I think they do a lot with a little, um, financially and physically, like with the plot. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a lot going on, but they do manage to not make the 90 minutes or however long it is feel very long. I will say, I know you, one of your complaints is going to probably be that you don't like the first act of the movie, or at least like. I things. love the first act of that movie. <laughs> really? I thought you would... I figured you would hate how much time they spend in the Oh, finals. like... Well, oh, I, are you referring to that text I sent you last night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. No. Okay, so I was watching this movie last night, and I was texting Dustin as I was watching it. And I just sent him a text that said, I forgot how much time they just spent dicking around at the fire it station. It is a long time at the fire station. I and didn't remember that. I either. love every second of that. It's all I did fucking too. hilarious. I did too. I actually have some stuff like, to say about that when we get there. But yeah. Honestly, the movie goes downhill when they go out on the call, well, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I like want like them just it, dick around at the fire station. Honestly, I would have just had them get trapped in the fucking fire station. That would have been hilarious. That would have been an interesting kind of little change from the original. Because, like I said, from what I remember, it's almost shot for shot remake. Uh, but then again, I've only seen it once. And it was probably back in like 2009 when I saw a record. So, who knows? Um, anything else before we get into the details of quarantine? Nope. All right. Let's get to it. So, as we said, here's 2008. Uh, the director is John Eric Dowdle, uh, starring Jennifer Carpenter, Jay Hernandez, Columbus Short, Greg German, Steve Harris, uh, Denia Ramirez, I'm going to butcher this name, Rade Sir Bedzija, Bedzia? I, I think that might be the landlord, I think he's the landlord of this movie, that's also in Silicon Valley, uh, and uh, Jonathan yeah. Shake. Shot. I don't know how to pronounce that. I, 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 why do I? I don't even know why I bother reading the names of the people that are starring in this movie. It stars Jennifer Carpenter. That's all you really need to know. Yeah. Um, also, she. It's funny as, um, like even though I've already, really, I think I've seen this movie maybe twice, three times if I did see it in theaters, which I don't think I did, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to ask our, our buddy Dylan Merriman if I saw it. I probably saw it with him, so mm-hmm. I'll ask him to confirm. Um. 
Jennifer Carpenter will always be the chick from Quarantine to me because of this movie. See, that, she'll always that was be... like the first. This was like the first thing I think I saw her in. Yeah, because I remember I didn't I didn't start watching Dexter until like well after like I think they were like yeah, airing see, season four maybe when I started watching Dexter. Dexter for me, yeah. But yeah, this she, too, she'll she'll be she's always <laughs> the chick from Quarantine for me, and like in in it's this movie's filled with like. Oh, that guy from this, Mm -hmm. like also, obviously retrospectively, like I remember texting, he was like, dude, the mom from Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is Mm -hmm. in this. Um, The dick, like the douchebag from Talladega Nights plays the vet. Mm -hmm. Um, Homie from Silicon Valley is in this. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask too, uh, other than Dexter and this movie, what else has Jennifer Carpenter been in? Like, can you She is married to one of the Avet brothers. I thought she well, she was dating Michael C. Hall for a while there. I guess I, they, they were married. Yeah, and she's dating um, one of the Avett now brothers. she is married to one of the Avett brothers. I don't know. I can't remember the not Scott. Mm. Okay. Oh wait, fuck. Uh, she was in fucking. Uh, she was Emily Rose, wasn't she? Yeah. Which fuck, oh, that's right. Glad you brought that up because we teased it last week, and I'm glad I remembered. The connection we uh, did, yeah. The connection, uh, uh, yeah, from Devil's Knot. Scott Derrickson wrote that movie as well as Exorcism of Emily Rose, which of course starred Jennifer Carpenter. So not very interesting, but there is a connection there. Um, uh, yeah, I just this that movie and Dexter is all I can ever think of her. Um, I don't know what she's been doing recently. I mean, I can look it up real quick because I'm Seth kind of Avis, That's his name. Okay. Uh, let's no see. one cares, but. The Avett brothers are good. They're fun. If you I mean, like, it looks like she's steadily you know, been working. All country. Yeah. She was in Brawl she, and 99. She had, she had some, like, I don't know, like TNT or NBC show for a while, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. She's on Limitless, the TV series based on the movie. Okay, yeah. That, that probably, okay. then. Um, she's not a bad actress, per se. I think she's a pretty good actress, but she just doesn't get all the work she should be getting like i think like she, needs she, a new age she was great in dexter for the most part i mean <sighs> um was she <laughs> i mean dude she did the best with what she could yeah. with some of the storylines her character her character got the biggest like shaft of any character yeah. on that fucking show well it's it's she has such a weird career with dexter because she was known as the girl that cries every episode and she did she cried every single episode and spoilers, if you don't want to be warned about the ending of Dexter, they kill her off the episode before the finale in the dumbest fucking way. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that show ended Real really bad. fucking stupidly. But Th- that show only had four seasons, in my opinion. Yeah, it did. Um, plus, there was that Sorry, weird... four seasons and one episode. Yeah, there was... Because the first episode of season five was kind of cool. I was like, fuck yeah, like, this is, like, six feet under Michael C. Hall, like, all depressed and shit. Mm-hmm. And then, like, season five, episode two, it's like the end of season four never fucking happened. Yep. She's like, okay. Plus, there was that weird stint they tried to do where it was, like, she was realizing she was in love with him, but he was her that stepbrother. That And then they were married in real life, and then he got cancer or whatever. It's a re- it was real well, dude, fucking that, weird. I think the whole, like her character being in love with Dexter storyline was after they had divorced. I'm pretty sure. Well, it was pretty funny too. Cause they just dropped that whole plot line. It never comes back up. <laughs> it, that God, that show took some. That show turns. went downhill super quickly. But anyways, this movie had a budget of $12 million managed to gross $41 million worldwide. God, we should do a special episode on Dexter. <laughs> um, <laughs> 50 per- uh, 56% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's all I got. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything what else you want to talk the, about? What does, what does Record have? Oh, that's a good question. I'm sure it's much higher. Uh, do, 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 do you want to fill the air while I look it up? Um, filling the air filling the air um yeah dude i don't know this i mean i know we still have to watch the trailer but i really just want to get into the movie but yeah i don't know this movie just did not work for me as much as i hoped it was going i was because i remember you told me we we're doing this I was like oh i'm actually kind of excited like i haven't seen that movie in probably a fucking decade 89 percent, by the way nice it's okay twice I as much should probably watch the original <laughs> it's really um, good from what i remember 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember being pretty excited to like watch this. I was like, oh, it'll be fun. And it was fun just because this movie's fucking dumb. Also, this <laughs> is our first zombie ish kind of movie, which is surprising because we're in our fourth season. You think we would have come up really? with Really? We've not? I can't. I, I'm going to double check while we watch the trailer, but I can't think of another movie we've done that had. Huh. I mean, these aren't officially quote unquote zombies, but they're close enough. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, huh. Do you want to watch the trailer? I mean, I guess. All right. Ready? Okay. Hi, I'm Angela Vidal. We're in Los Angeles, traveling along with the fire department. Is that so bad? These are the men you'll be shadowing tonight. Wherever they go, I just go heard to. the joke about the pole hole. Oh, yeah. Talk. A woman was screaming bloody murder back there. Fire department's about to begin the rescue process. Police say that she lives alone. She's not very social. Okay, okay. We're gonna get you some medical help, okay? Go, go, go! Everybody, come on. Tape everything, you hear me? Tape everything! Officer down! Mary, have an officer down! I need an ambulance immediately! Do not try to leave the building. This will all be over shortly. Why are they isolating you? Know. more than you know right now, okay? We were told that tenants inside need medical aid. Chief! Everyone's been evacuated. Everyone's completely safe. Why would he say that? I can't get through to my husband and my daughter. Has to oh my god! We gotta get out of here. Get away! We are filming this! People are gonna see what you're doing! She's a really good screamer. Yeah, that's why I screamed at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> No matter what happens, just keep it's a good screen. My daughter has a fever. I think I know what this is. We need to talk to her. Whose apartment is this? Oh my god. You have no idea how bad this thing is. The man who lives here. Let me get out of here! I do like this sound effect. I have a problem with this. I have a problem with the whole trailer. In <laughs> retrospect. Um, okay. Also, talking about the cast, Joey King's also in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, She will forever to me be the girl that spoiled The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, she, like literally in like an interview like a month before the movie came out, she was like in an interview and she's like, yeah, I play young Talia al Ghul. And everyone's like, Talia al Ghul. Ooh. Oh, well, that's obviously Marion Cotillard. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know about um, that. Wait, Apparently, she but, also grew up to be um, something else, too. She's an She was in that th uh, show, The Act, last year. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 Pretty uh, one show. of my friends worked on that. Um, she's in The Conjuring. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, or, she was, in was she in Conjuring movie, 1 right? or 2? She was in Conjuring 1. She was in Conjuring right. 1, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Joey King's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, she's a good actress. She was on um, the Fargo TV show, too. I forgot about that. Oh, God, dude, I love the Fargo, Fargo so TV good. show. Season anyway. 2 of that show is fucking perfect. Yes, anyway, this trailer spoils everything. Yeah, I've got a lot to <laughs> say about the like, trailer. Down to the ending shot of the movie. Yep, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause Which... My you can do an ending shot of your film in a trailer. Look at the trailer for The Dark Knight. Yeah. The final shot of the movie is in the trailer. Somehow this rubs me the wrong way, though. Christopher Nolan actually has a habit of doing that, because I'm pretty sure the top spinning in Inception is also in the trailer. Oh, wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, this the way this movie does it, it rubs me the wrong way, just because I guess so, you wouldn't well, expect it, that to you, be you, the you, ending. You can do stuff like that in like a Christopher Nolan movie because those shots, like the final shots, of, like the final shot of Dark Knight's Batman riding the bat pod on yeah, a street. It's, it's not like a pivotal moment. In it's terms not of, like, you know, him shooting Joker in the face or something. They yeah. put that in the trailer. It's yeah. but this. Yeah, they they spoil most of the character deaths, too. Yeah, they, sh they show um, the guy from Silicon Valley get shot in the fucking head. Uh -huh. And that's a pretty like dramatic moment in the movie. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's like other... if you've seen the trailer, like the moment at the end, like we'll talk about the end of the movie, but like yeah. that moment, you're like, 
She's going to get dragged away. And that's, well, I guess unless you're looking, literally looking at your watch and you're counting down the minutes, you, I, I can't imagine anybody that saw that trailer and went in that movie and saw that happening and was like, oh, this is the end. Like, you have to expect something else is coming, right? Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. I mean, that's how I see it. I'm like, clearly, there's they wouldn't end it like that, and then they do. <laughs> um, my other big thing about this trailer is that the titles and the graphics are fucking terrible. Like, they're very... Real bad. They're very 90s, and this is movie is 2008. Real bad. Like, we were past all that. Um, also, uh, I don't know if you noticed... Clearly, we were not. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but they're... Um, the trailer mentions a website at the end, um, which I did look into, and it is down. <laughs> no Fuck. surprises. Um, but they, they do have a Twitter account for the movie, and it's still up. Damn it, um, Dustin, you're sh- Dustin is sharing his screen with me, and I keep trying to click stuff on his screen, and it's <laughs> fucking with me. <laughs> uh, their Twitter account only has 12 tweets that extend as far back as like when the movie was released, so back in 2008, which is kind of impressive for Twitter. Um, but but yeah. it's also God, dude. I don't even think I had Twitter. I don't think mm-hmm. I joined tw- the 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 Twitter verse until like oh nine, bro. Yeah. Uh, and they only have do one... not go look at my Twitter in two thousand nine. <laughs> it is not good. They also only have one like across all of their twelve tweets, which I thought was kind of funny. But what? Ha- <laughs> what? Huh? I mean, Twitter was fairly new, I guess, in two thousand eight. So maybe you know, I didn't have guess. Any um, but they, the funny thing is their most recent tweet was back in 2012 and they, they were tweeting four years after this movie came out <laughs> and they definitely got hacked since the tweet is about weight loss and it sends you to a website that is also down. <laughs> God, so yeah, amazing. check out their, uh, Twitter account if you want. It's kind of funny. Amazing. Um, uh, all right. Let's get into the movie because there's yeah there's we're a lot we're twenty something minutes into this episode and haven't really gotten <laughs> into the film yet. Uh, but I did look while the trailer was playing. This is our first zombie adjacent movie. Like the closest thing we did was the Cabin in the Woods, which does have zombies in it. There are zombies in it technically. But I would call this our first zombie movie. Interesting. All right. So it's amazing we managed to get. You know, eighty episodes in before we did one. <laughs> uh, Way to go, us! Yeah. Way to go, us! Do you remember Screen Gems? Because you don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like that's the first note Screen I have. Gym, down. I'm pretty sure Screen Gems <laughs> Studios are still in Atlanta. Are they? I figured they would have got. Bought yeah, out they're by now, like like, like ten something. minutes from my house. Actually, that's crazy. I just can't recall. I've never, Screen I've Gems never ago. worked there at mm. those sound stages, but like I've, one of my friends lives literally across the street from them. Yeah, I just I can't believe they're still thriving then in 2020. I just I feel like I never see that card at the beginning of movies anymore. I figured they would have got bought out by like Blumhouse or something. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm trying to think of stuff that like they did the screen was movies produced. too, right? Or is that all New Line Cinema? Uh, I think I'm pretty sure they did a. Uh... That the Grudge remake that came out, yeah, that was terrible. Also, probably um, an upcoming episode at some point. Just so you know. Oh god damn it! Yeah, scary. they. I mean, they mainly do like lower horror. Movies. Like oh, they did fuck. that uh, Brightburn Bright movie Burn. that Dude, James Gunn produced. I got a lot to say about Brightburn, which also will probably be an episode one day. Because cool, I actually haven't seen it, and I've been meaning to. It's so. not good. Just so you know. Oh, really okay. bad. Real bad. Um, oh. Also, I think they did that. Uh, what was movie. that movie? Um, uh, it's the dude that did the. Uh, oh, they did Searching. That's a good movie. It was the dude that did the Evil Dead remake. Um, what was it? Oh, Fidi uh, Alvarez. Yeah. What was that? Other Don't movie? breathe. Start. The... Yeah, that was a pretty. That good was movie. Screen Gems. Yeah, okay. I actually really liked that movie. It's fine. I I'm... thought it was fun. It, it's good. and I can if you've seen it. Then you know why I can never look at a turkey baster yeah. the same yeah. way again. No, I like I like Fidi Alvarez. Holy shit! And I like Jane Levy. Uh, she's really good in the Evil Dead remake. She's really oh, good dude, I I back that Evil Dead remake so, so hard. hard. Anyway, quarantine. Yeah, sorry. so they dick around at a fire station for like an hour at the beginning of this movie, <laughs> which I like. I like the camaraderie a lot. That begins. I love this it. Movie. That dude. That I would watch. 
I would just watch like a comedy of firemen mm-hmm. dicking around. Like that shit is hilarious. Yeah, I like I like the characters, or at least like how they interact with one another. It feels real, and I think when it comes down to like found footage, you don't get a whole lot of that. Like it, yeah. if you do, like, it mm-hmm. always feels forced. Whereas this feels fairly genuine in terms like, of like that sequence this in cloverfield kind of mm-hmm. i they think both kind of nail that because like yeah. the party scene in cloverfield i fucking love yeah it doesn't come off as forced um and it's like you're not waiting for these characters to just die like i feel like right. i feel like one of the big problems with horror movies is that you don't typically feel for the characters all that much they just feel 100%. like lambs to the slaughter and like when someone dies you don't really feel anything because you didn't get to know them or really like those characters. And I think found footage really helps with that. Um, but I do got to say, <laughs> did you notice um, when Probably the, not. the firemen are leading uh, Angela, Jennifer Carpenter, into the dining hall? And, you know, they're all eating like sandwiches and chili. There's one guy that just has a massive bowl of walnuts that he's cracking. <laughs> Like it's just a no, huge, really? Yeah, it's just a huge tin bowl that he's just got a whole bunch of walnuts in, <laughs> and he's just cracking. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I I do like this opening scene a lot. I don't remember it being well. I didn't remember it being this long, but it is like a good like ten fifteen minutes of the movie. Um, but I do think you know uh, it does really help. You you feel more for Angela, and even the cameraman who you don't get to see that often. You do feel for them once the movie does get going, and of course the firemen too. Like by the yeah. time we get to the apartment complex, I don't really care about any of the other people in the movie. Like I don't really care about the landlord. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't remember any characters' names, but no, the no. fireman with the mustache that just yeah. keeps saying dumb shit. Yeah, fucking hilarious. Oh, I love when he gets caught talking about how he can he can get with Jennifer Carpenter by the end of the night. And rather than oh like, yeah, which any other movie could have went a different way with that. Like they could have had her, you know, be very offended by it and like really make the tone awkward. But she comes back at him full force, and I loved it. And they play off each other well, and then they continue to have that kind of nice, friendly relationship throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah. yeah oh, the back, great. like the shit he says in the fire truck on the way to the uh-huh. apartment building is so fucking funny. When they're rating people one out of ten, rating women one out of ten, and then she points yeah. out a guy. It's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much to say about the, uh, other than what we already talked about it for the top half of this movie. Do you yeah. want to get to so, the apartment? Yeah, complex? so let's get when they actually get to the building. Yeah. Um, um, you mentioned... this building is run down as fuck. Well, yeah, and it's a set like, too. Like you, you walk into this, uh, like who, like all of those people, like the vet. What does that dude do? What is he doing, living in like this fucking that slum? and the lawyer? Like, why are they living? There? They like, should be able to afford this something place. Nicer. Looks so shitty. <laughs> well, it's because you never get to see anything with lights on, really. Even when the electricity is still in the building, everything looks so dark and dingy and grungy. Yeah. You can't get a feel for like texture or color because everything is just so dark. So it, all, it automatically looks cheap and run down. I mean, there's a fabric shop in the back of the, the lobby. <laughs> so that right. should tell you something. Um, um, but you, you mentioned um, that the mom from Marvelous Miss Maisel is in that. Who does she play in the movie? She plays Joey King's mother. Right. Okay. So the one that's got the fever that eventually yeah. does turn. Yeah. So, okay. and, and then in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, she plays uh, the main character's mom. Got it. Okay. I and she's married that. to Tony Shaloub. Oh, wow. Tony Shalhoub's in the show. <laughs> honestly, I can't recommend if you haven't watched Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Just go watch it. It's so like the pilot episode of that show may be one of the best pilots I've ever seen. I mean, it sweeps the Emmys like every year. So, dude, it's like I went in. I thought the fucking I thought it was like a fucking BBC show, like about some like I thought it was some Downton Abbey type shit. That's what it looks like to me. It's one. It's not British at all. It's about like a this like Jewish girl in New York. Okay. (laughs) Um dude seriously just watch it the cast is fucking amazing the writing's hilarious like it's so fucking good i gotta watch that and i still gotta watch fleabag because i keep hearing oh dude Fle- oh my god both of those shows amazon prime shout out both of those shows fleabag is 
God, it's I'm gonna show up. Season two is amazing. Or sorry, season one is amazing. Season two is perfect. Okay. And dude, you could watch that entire like you could watch both seasons of that in a day. Oh, okay. That like it's like nothing. what both seasons combined is sixteen episodes, and they're like maybe thirty minutes each. Oh, okay. I thought this was an hour drama. But okay. No, I don't even. I think I think Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Those are closer to like forty five to an hour, maybe. Okay. Um. But yeah, dude, both of those shows I cannot recommend enough. It's so fucking good. Um. Mm-hmm. This movie is not. <laughs> um, um, I wanted to, I the reason I asked is I thought maybe you were talking about the the actress that plays Mrs. Espinosa. Um, no, I think given that she basically just has to play essentially patient zero for this movie of the first quote unquote zombie character. Is that your is that her IMDb you have pulled I, up on your screen right yeah, now? Yeah, looking at it right now. She does mostly Damn. stunts. Yeah, 153 stunt credits including uh, including the Amazing Spider-Man flight Cedar Rapids. I can't I don't remember any stunts being in them. <laughs> uh the Book of Eli I mean she was born in 1941 and she has been working at least up until 2015. Uh, her, yeah, her last credit was 2015. Holy shit. Yeah. Fast dude, she, dude, Drift. she did Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. That's amazing. Kill, Kill Bill, Bill Volume 2. Two. Bad Boys, Boys 2. Too Fast, Too Fear. A lot of the twos. Uh, dude, yeah. holy shit. She is really good in this movie. Like, uh, zombie acting yeah, she's, seems you know, terrifying. like... terrifying. Yeah, zombie acting seems like it would be easy, but it there's a certain... There's a certain thing you have to do with it to make it believable. And given her age and how physical she is, like how she's able to really terrify you as like an older woman uh, is fucking amazing. Like, yeah, damn, dude, her God, her stunt credits are fucking nuts. Yeah. I mean, I'm just we're still just kind of glossing over. But yeah, she's Weird. she plays Miss Harmony in Kill Bill Volume 2. I don't remember who that character is, but me neither. And yeah, no, she, uh, she's still alive, still. Still working, uh, at least Good in the past for five her. years. Yeah. Anyway, back to this piece of shit movie. Um, we keep getting so <laughs> sidetracked about other well, shit. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about with the movie, but it doesn't stem from the plot. Like it all centers around like the people in it and like the setup, the history, everything. Yeah. Like there's not really too much to talk about in terms of the plot. The plot is uh, essentially a doomsday cult perfects a virus that people think is rabies but it's essentially used to just wipe out humanity or at least it's being tested for that purpose um right and the characters kind of figure that out as we go along um speaking of which we can we can jump around a bit but um the the whole doomsday cult part you don't really get revealed to you if you didn't watch the trailer which they show in the trailer until the very end of the movie um where there's like the the cliche, uh, you know, clippings on the wall uh, from newspapers and everything. But uh-huh. there's a tape player there that plays a message that um, the characters don't understand. Um, it's just like a slowed down, deep voice that doesn't really say anything. But do you actually want to know what it says? Because I did happen to look it up. I was curious. Uh, yeah, because I was going to ask what the fuck the point of that was. So here's what I think. Um I think that tape player is it was an old reel to reel kind of thing, and I think that maybe there was just a speed setting on there that neither Angela or the cameraman knew how to adjust to play it back at proper speed, which is why it sounds so slowed down and everything. Um, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but when sped up, uh, I got a transcription right here. It says, um, "It appears the spread will be impossible to contain." November 7th, something unexpected has happened. Our brothers in the East have come under suspicion. And then in, that's where just they just kind of leave. Uh, but in the DVD commentary, the, the writer and the director um, explained that the thin man, played by Doug Jones in the movie, the guy with the thin hair at the very end of the movie that essentially kills the cameraman and Angela. Doug um, Jones, also known as, you know... Everything... <laughs> Abe from Hellboy, the fish he's been in almost two hundred movies from, uh, uh, whatever that fucking fish movie that won an Oscar. He's, were, he's was. a fucking national treasure and deserves some more recognition than he gets. Yeah, if you're not watching the What We Do in the Shadows TV show, he's in like five episodes in the first season. God, that show's 
fucking amazing I mean, too. His body of work is insane. He was in Batman Returns, Hocus Pocus, uh, yeah, his... Men in Black Two, Hellboy, Hellboy Two. Um, he's the titular <laughs> Bye Bye Man. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Jones is fucking awesome, yeah. is what we're saying. But anyways, anyway, they say in the commentary that that was he was basically recording a manifesto, um, and they were going to play it unaltered in that scene, uh, kind of explaining everything. But they figured it just so much creepier to let people just pontificate and wonder what exactly happened, which I kind of like. I like that they play that tape, and the characters aren't smart enough to realize like, oh, this tape is, has to be sped up to a certain. You know, it's got to be set to a certain setting to play back properly, and they're just clueless. I think that's interesting. It makes the scene a little more tense. You know, it's believable. Whereas I feel like it's little things like that, I think, in this movie, which make it a better horror movie than, a, like, a typical one in that regard. I feel like found footage is real easy to get lost in the weeds there, and this movie manages to do a pretty good balance, in my opinion. Um. Okay. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to... I figure people wanted to know what that whole ending was about. So there you go. Um, let's. And I think. Go sorry, ahead. go ahead. I don't well, know where I was going with my thought. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to talk about the police in this movie and not necessarily just the police officer that's in the building, but the police outside. Uh, this okay. has to be the dumbest part of the movie to me. Um, the, you know, I, bold for people, statement for the people inside and the people outside the building because when they're you know they're in the building they're being locked in and they don't give them any information for the longest time and then they're finally like you guys stay inside don't worry the situation's under control we'll have you out in a little bit but they give them no information which i get is the point but as a person that would be in that situation if i were in that building it just seems real shifty that they're not giving you any information they won't tell you you know, we we suspect there's a disease or something like that. They're just like, stay in there. We'll figure it out. And then, of course, when they open the blinds and there's, you know, full military guard men with fucking assault rifles aimed at you, you got to, you know. My, my big problem with it is when they go upstairs and they're watching the cable news and the police chief goes on record uh for saying, you know, uh, everything's under control, the building's been evacuated. It's really, really stupid for a number of reasons. But the big one being, there's yep. there's going to be a record of everyone in that building in there. Like, regardless if they all die, if they manage to take the tape out of the camera that's filming the whole movie, like, they're gonna, there's going to be a record of all those people you can't cover up an entire building's worth of people just all vanishing. Not to mention the firemen that went in, the police officer that went in. I mean, the, it basically implies that they that police officer that, that went in there, they're all just going to cover up. Like, isn't police culture that, you know, you're, you're all for one? Like, that's the whole point. Like, all, like, you mess with one police officer, you mess with them all. It feels like there's none of that in this movie. <laughs> They're not going to be able in, to explain all that in way. Theory, yeah, yeah, but apparently in practice, not I mean, so much. Also, they straight up fire bullets into that building, so people definitely heard that. I mean, they show later in the movie like that the whole area around the building's taped off, and I don't know if you've ever seen a uh, area taped off in the real world before, but people crowd around. Like people gather around, and they're curious what's going on. They're gonna hear gunshots. There, there's no way this all gets covered up, which I do feel like is the stupidest part of this movie. I don't know. It it just doesn't make it. I don't buy into any of it. It's very sloppy writing, in my opinion. But oh. yeah. Well, fair enough. Stupid cops. I mean, I I. 100 percent agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's not much discussion there you just yep we'll, we'll keep moving on. yeah no i i agree with you <laughs> can i ask one simple question that's rhetorical but i feel like you'll appreciate this too um where is the sound guy in this movie <laughs> because there's the news anchor there's the camera operator but the sound is impeccable for just using essentially the shotgun mic on the camera like everybody is mic'd up perfectly and there's no way to explain that either. <laughs> huh. Yeah, didn't think about that, huh? 
No. I mean, it, that just would have been one more character to kill off, but I just feel like it's there's never just two people, a camera guy and a news anchor, and if so, you're, it's going to sound like shit. So, well, it's like I, they have like they have lights on the yeah, but then like the, the people in the building don't. have a lot. Right. Yo, this movie's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all falls apart when you put it under the tiniest bit of scrutiny. Yeah, <laughs> dude, um, yo, fuck this movie. <laughs> Literally, I'm the glad only, they died. The only other note I have is that I do like um, the nice moments between the camera guy and Jennifer Carpenter when he has to like reassure her that she hasn't been bitten. Dude, he is the MVP of this fucking movie. Steps on that rat, kills that one zombie with the camera, and just keeps yeah. going. He doesn't flinch, and like man. he's looking out for her the whole time, and. Not for nothing, keeping a lot of that stuff in frame while he's running. Yeah, honestly, shout out. Yeah. But no, I do like, like man, that it's moment. It's sad he died. He had a future in the industry. Well, he dies and it's like kind of out of nowhere. Like you don't really get a whole lot. Like, I don't know. But I mean, that ending is real quick. Esteban was eaten. <laughs> I I don't know. He's a great character. And like I said, I do like that moment when the camera is like on the ground and Jennifer Carpenter's freaking out, thinking that she's been bitten. He's, like, trying to reassure her that she hasn't. Oh, it's, yeah, dude. Oh, and great. the fucking firefighter just snapping the neck of that fucking chick. Yeah. But yeah, that, that little sequence actually is rad. Yeah, Jennifer Carpenter's freak out right there is great. I mean, them going, like, trying to go to the basement to get out and then realizing they have to run up to the attic and, like, how they how that all is filmed. It's impressive, filming anything found footage wise but when you have to run and keep the camera there and keep everything in focus and it it's just a lot it's a fucking amazing job that they do which i know is obviously not that actor playing the cameraman but it is right it's fucking great work still pretty cool um, um and you i think you kind of offhand mentioned this but so the whole building was one set right yes it was all constructed for this movie i think four floors that's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, Holy shit. Which, I guess it's interesting that we never find out, like, if that basement would have been a sufficient escape route. Which, I again, I like that they kind of tease you with that. Like, yep, this is where we're going. And then all of a sudden the movie has to shift, you know, significantly. Yeah, they, they pull that basement rug out from under you real fucking quick. It's, like I said, I think little things like that make this movie add up to be... At least, I would say, in the 70 percentile. Maybe even... Maybe this movie's better than I am giving it credit for, I guess. I I mean, like I said, it's fun. You don't feel that runtime. I feel like you do genuinely like a lot of the characters. Um, You know, and it's it's filmed pretty Uh, well. I didn't give a shit about anyone that lived in the apartment. I cared about, like... The I feel like they really guy, dropped the ball. Jennifer with, Carpenter and like the two firefighters. I feel like they really I didn't dropped give the ball a shit about anyone with, else. Uh, the mom and her kid being sick. Like you, I don't feel for that woman at all, really. And then when they're like the whole office, well, the whole office, the whole apartment complex is realizing that that little girl is probably going to turn into a zombie, and they're all trying to convince her to let the vet look at her. Like that could have been such a more emotionally driven scene, and it just doesn't hold up. Compared to the rest of the movie for me. Agreed. Like little little parts like that could have been perfect like smoothed out a little better and could have been this could have been a much higher movie than I think was it fifty six percent is what I said on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I feel like it could like be that. it was it was low. Yeah. Um I don't really have too much else. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I mean I've got No, let's 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 jump to that ending right quick. All right. Um well so the characters, like we said, get a key to the basement and they're playing the, the one remaining firefighter, uh, Angela and the cameraman decide they're going to run down to the basement and try and escape. Um, but he, the fireman gets taken out pretty quickly. Um, and they, the two remainder, some remaining survivors realize they have to run up to the attic to get away. They get up there. Um, they find the tape player that we talked about. Um, they see all the news clippings talking about a doomsday cult um, trying to bring upon Armageddon. Um, they see what looks, it's real quick, but there's essentially a 
uh, infected little boy shut up in the attic, like in the actual part of the attic. Um, you know, they turn, they do the whole night vision sequence because the power goes out and they're trying to sneak around this, what presumably would be the culprit who caused all of this, the thin man played by Doug Jones. Um, as he's rummaging through his apartment, he attacks the cameraman, uh, and then eventually attacks, uh, Angela as she gets dragged away into the darkness, which is what you see in the trailer as the final shot. And then it just kind of cuts to black. Like that's, that's really, yeah, there's no, not a whole lot of fanfare. Yeah. After that. Um, I do have, um, a prop cop, um, that we can talk about. Oh, boy. that of course is the prop that I and Mally would most like to own from this movie. Um, I just want the old school tape player that we talked about. I think a reel to reel is super cool. Uh, it's retro. I don't own one. I think it would be cool to play around with. Um, it, and if, especially if it had that recording on there, that would be kind of cool to own too. Nope. See, you're you're thinking self selfishly. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna go practical with mine. Okay. I want the fucking CDC fucking hazmat suit, bro. <laughs> so that's two suits <laughs> this season alone that you want that are both for uh, preventing diseases. <laughs> Because you wanted yeah. the suit from Contagion, too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry for fucking thinking rationally <laughs> in these trying times, Dustin. Which suit is cooler, though? Which one would you rather have? Contagion, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. We we talked about the only trivia I really had to talk about was that, yeah, that apartment complex was a full set. Um, and it was four floors. Four separate floors. So... I think that's it still fucking insane to me. Yeah, like great. I can't imagine walking onto a soundstage and seeing that. Seeing four. Like I- I've walked onto a soundstage and seen some crazy sets, mm-hmm. but not one that was fucking a f- like a full, full apartment complex. Fucking apartment building. That's insane. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I have nothing else. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into silver linings? Let's do it. All right. So, Silver Linings for the 2008 film Quarantine, Um, this is kind of the crutch of the show. (laughs) And we Um, are so bad at it. It's often the most (laughs) overlooked part of our show (laughs) that we do little to no preparation for. Um, I will say, I know you like me going first, so I'll go ahead, um, that my Silver Lining is that given what we see, the virus was indeed contained. So... As horrible as, as the events that happen in there, at least, uh, you know, they managed to contain it. It was indeed quarantined. So, you got that going for it. What do you have? See, I'm going opposite end of the spectrum. I'm okay. saying the Doomsday Cult, their plan might have worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're saying your silver lining is that the virus that they perfected to wipe out humanity worked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what <laughs> no, no, that's fine um just you know i figured you were gonna go with something like that so i figured i'd go with you know what well, here's the thing there's a not, counter take there's not a whole lot to gleam off of in terms of like any, even if you look at any of the other characters i mean yeah they all die but there's not even really a whole lot we learn about them to be like oh well you know it's not like there was one character that's like, I can't afford to pay rent, and then they died, so now they don't have to pay rent. <laughs> There's nothing like that. Um, Man, I paid rent last night, mm-hmm. and I'm so pissed off about it. Right, right. <laughs> uh, the, if, I mean, the fucking Cheesecake Factory just came out and straight up said, we're not paying rent, and that story lasted all of about two hours, and no one gave a shit. So the fact that I still had to pay mine is... A little, little irritated. A little irritated. Um, uh, me and my roommate were texting back and forth yesterday about it. It was just oh, garbage. <laughs> <sighs> um, I wish that fucking Doomsday Call would release a virus and kill all of us. <laughs> actually, maybe. Maybe that's what we're dealing with. There actually was a report of a <laughs> fucking cult. <clears throat> I want to say it was in like Eastern Europe. 
that was actively trying to help spread the coronavirus. Eastern Europe, that sounds about right, that they would do Yeah, that, that that was back in, like, the early days. That was back in, like, March. <laughs> well, <Woo>! yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's quarantine. Do you want to talk about a pick-me-up movie alternative? A movie that people can watch after they watch quarantine that may lift their spirits um, back up? Uh... <laughs> Okay, I'm again. I think I did this last week. I'm just gonna suggest just the movie I just happened to watch after this mm-hmm. because I finished this movie. I had to rent this movie on fucking Prime Video because it was not streaming anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, flipped on over to Netflix to, you know, throw something on afterwards. And there on my homepage was now streaming Mel Gibson's Patriot. Okay. So I'm going to recommend that flick. Um, Something just totally different. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I fucking love that movie. Mm -hmm. Fucking Mel Gibson, Heath Ledger, uh, Chris Cooper, the dude that played uh, Malfoy's dad, Lucius Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. It's fucking awesome. It's like a revolutionary war piece. Right. It's not historically accurate but i have a deep-seated love for that fucking movie oh, and in i didn't it wasn't like one of those things where, like i opened netflix like oh shit like i'm gonna have to watch that i was like oh shit i'm watching that <laughs> yeah okay so i'm just gonna recommend that because that is literally what i watched after quarantine last night all right um i wanted to stay within the zombie quarantine also side note Another Amazon show you should watch and everyone should watch is the Amazon show Patriot has nothing to do with the Mel Gibson movie. Completely different, but it's fucking amazing. I've heard good things about it. Um, Yeah. Two seasons. Can't recommend it enough. I wanted to stick within the zombie quarantine kind of aspect of it, but something that's fun and entertaining. So I went with Shaun of the Dead. One of my. See, I knew you were going to go with Shaun of the Dead. That movie's fucking great. Yeah. One of my favorite zombie or just straight up comedies in general. Just well, it's perfect. funny. Like, I remember when this whole, like, when the whole, like, stay at home order was put in place, everyone was just reposting the. Have a pint. Of, of fucking. Of yeah. Winchester. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Him, like, winking. Yep. Like, Go to Winchester, have a pint, and wait for this all to blow over. Yep. I was like, yeah, that's pretty much. So, Mally, uh, would you recommend 2008's Quarantine? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're having, if you're feeling like having a spooky movie night, you know, maybe throw it on. It's fun. Yeah, might hit a little too close to home for some people right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I would recommend as well. Um, uh, I would say, you know, I haven't seen Record in a long time, but my memory tells me that movie was better. Um, but I don't think that makes this a bad movie. I think given you know the low budget and you know i I, like i said i think they did a fantastic job given what they had and it's a fun movie i think it is a fun a lot of found footage movies aren't very fun um and you know to piggyback off that not a lot of horror movies are fun i think this movie is got some pretty good scares i mean they're mostly jump scares but they are the whole atmosphere is pretty great in this movie if you want a fun horror movie, check out the Black Christmas remake from 2019. It was a lot Ooh, of fun. I have to, I have to see that. It's not a great movie, but I, I had like I, so I double featured that after it was when me and Dylan Merriman we were home in Indiana. We went and saw the Rise of Skywalker. I'm sorry because we wanted to reaffirm that yes, that movie was trash. Yep. And afterwards, he was like, "Man, I'm bummed out." I was like, "Yeah." He's like. You want to go check out the Black Christmas remake? I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed the the remake, the second remake, actually, because there was another remake in the early 2000s of yes, Black it Christmas. Was. Um, I enjoyed the that Black Christmas remake more than I enjoyed a Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? Like, the, now, like, Star Wars isn't, not not even just because it's over now, but, like, Star Wars isn't the same spectacle as it was. It's... Dude, it sucked, because I remember, like, the Force Awakens trailer and that movie gave me that like I don't know oh that feeling in my gut. That Force like, Awakens fuck trailer. Yeah, this... oh, well, dude, it's funny because it. I never I never felt that with any of the trailers for Last Jedi or the movie nope. itself. Like we're on record, everyone knows I hate that movie. Yeah, but the trailers for Rise of Skywalker, I got that feeling. 
Really? I got angry watching the Rise of Skywalker trailer. I was like, "There, this is some fan service ripping off end game bullshit." And See, like, it, even Billy it, D it didn't me, it bring me gave back. Me the, it just it gave me that feeling of like, okay, this feels more Star Wars to me than Last Jedi did. But yeah. then I saw the movie and I was like, nope, not oh, a fucking chance. So bad. We maybe, I mean, it doesn't qualify for the show, but maybe we should just do a special episode where we just rip on that. Movie. Honestly, I could make an argument that says it fucking does. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, anyways, will, that I will make that argument. That is right 2008. Now, maybe. <laughs> Quarantine, uh, directed by John Eric Dowdle. If you want more Silver Linings playlists, you can subscribe wherever you're listening to this um please leave us a rating and some feedback if you wouldn't mind we'd really appreciate that follow us on the social medias facebook twitter and instagram and if you want to deep dive you can go over to our subreddit reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist uh mally next week is your pick do you want to give us a clue oh fuck i forgot (laughs) (laughs) um Oh, Fuck. Uh, I, I I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna free ball this one. Okay. Um. Uh. uh <laughs> toilet water. Toilet water. Yep. Okay. Um. I gotta say I know what we're doing next week, and I have no idea where you're going with that. Um. But I will say if it's the same movie that I'm thinking of, uh. That this movie we're doing next week also was a very impressive set that was built. So tune in next week where hopefully Mal and I are talking about the same movie. <laughs> um, Fingers crossed, because now I'm not so sure. <laughs> we'll we'll edit this out. It's fine. Um, oh, all right, fuck that. Keep it in. <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about before we go for the week? I'm good. Well, hopefully by the time this comes out, because we are recording in advance, that. Quarantine is lifted, uh, and we have some kind of semblance of normalcy we're getting back to. I mean, even if it's not lifted, I, want I just... to leave the house. I'm in the exact opposite boat. I kind of hope we continue doing this forever. I don't want to be around people. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm fine not leaving the house. I'm fine people not being able to be near me. I'm actually thriving on that. Mm-hmm. I do want to go back to work. <laughs> I want to go back to movie theaters. That's like the only thing I miss. <laughs> They're fucking open in Georgia now, apparently, so oh, yeah. come here. Good luck. Uh, uh, we're going <laughs> to die. All right. Well, I don't have anything else to talk about, um, so we should go ahead and get out of here. So thank you again for listening, everyone. And as always, remain indoors. I'm sorry. We, did you have something else planned there? Nope. That was it. Excelsior. 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 Excelsior! Look at us!